Hi, my name is Scott Hunter, and I'm here today to talk about what's new in the .NET platform. First off, it's been a great year in .NET. We've actually grown our active developer 61% uh, year over year, which I'm very happy about. Even more so, we released .NET Core in the summer, and 40% of .NET Core is being used by brand new developers. Um, and as part of the open sourcing of .NET, you can see that uh, we've had this huge uptake on GitHub of contributions outside of Microsoft on .NET. So this is showing we have an awesome, healthy ecosystem. Even more so, uh, we measured all the, the pull requests we had in open source uh, in 2015, and you can see this right here. I can also click here and show you how that changed in 2016. You can see this huge explosion of growth in .NET open source, which I'm really, really happy about. The next big thing is, I think it's one of the most exciting times to be a .NET developer, because for the first time ever, you can actually build Windows applications, you can build cross-platform web applications that run on servers, um, and mobile applications all with .NET. So you can build all your front ends and all your back ends on .NET through our frameworks. We have .NET Framework, .NET Core, and Xamarin. Today, I want to talk a little bit about all the things you can do with .NET. You can see from the slide here, we've got Windows applications, cross-platform, we've got this .NET standard there, and I'm going to focus in on a few of these things. So let's start with Windows. What have we done for .NET Framework? With .NET 4.62, um, we added support for long path support, finally in .NET. We added some cool new uh, extensibility points in ASP.NET to allow better caching performance. Uh, it's basically async caching performance. Um, and for WPF, we've added per monitor DPI support, meaning you can take your application and as you move it across one monitor to the next, uh, it'll readjust based on the, the DPI of that monitor. Um, a bunch of cool stuff in .NET as well is we announced last year this bridge. We call this the Centennial Bridge. This allows you to take your .NET applications, uh, WinForms, WPF, and actually put them in the Windows Store. Um, the Windows Store is great, but you can also put it in the Store for Business. Uh, the Store for Business allows you to distribute your applications. Instead of using Click Once, you can use the Windows Store for your enterprise to distribute your applications. Uh, so put your applications up there, and as you update them, all the apps, uh, all, the, all the desktops in your business will update at the same time via the store. Another thing I'm really excited about is support for Windows containers. Uh, for the first time ever, you can take your .NET applications and run them in containers on Windows Server 2016. Um, and something coming pretty soon, uh, it's in Visual Studio 2017, but it'll be in the next uh, point release of Windows, is we've added high DPI support for WinForms. This means your WinForm application you built years ago uh, you can drop a manifest file on it, and it will look beautiful on a high DPI monitor. And that's some of the things we're doing in the .NET framework. Let's talk about .NET Core. .NET Core is the new addition to the family, and VS 2017 is the first time we've had tooling support built into Visual Studio for .NET Core. Uh, the main things here, we want to make .NET Core the best platform for building containers and microservices. So it runs cross-platform on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. It's super, super fast, faster than Node.js, faster than Go. Um, and we've got some benchmarks to prove that. It's also lightweight. Um, it's very easy to um, build a small version of your application and move it around. It's not a global installed uh, product like it was in the past. You can basically self-contain the application. And it's also fully open source, um, which is pretty cool. All the source code's up on GitHub. You can go take a look at it anytime and even build your own. Um, I was mentioning before, ASP.NET Core is super, super fast. And here's a benchmark showing a couple of the, the popular technologies. You can see Node.js up here, you can see Go, you can see Servlet with Java, and you can see ASP.NET Core is doing really, really well in this benchmark. This is something that we really care about. This benchmark is actually a public benchmark. If you want to go see the live results to see other technologies, you can just go to techempower.com slash benchmarks, and number round, round number 13 is the first round we've been in, and you're going to see we come out to be number 10 in that benchmark, which I am very happy about. The frameworks that are above us, are mainly frameworks trying to get a benchmark score. They're not real frameworks. So you're gonna find us being one of the highest, high productivity, full-featured frameworks up there. I also want to announce today, um, Visual Studio 2017 is available, and it's the first Visual Studio that has integrated .NET Core tooling built directly into the product. So you can now install .NET Core with VS 2017, um, and it also has uh, a unification of our tooling platform. If you try .NET Core, um, over the last couple of years, it had its own project system called Project.json. Uh, we've taken the best features of Project.json and we merged them into CSProj, um, and we made that change because we want 
the tooling for .NET to be the same no matter you're building a WinForm application, a WPF application, a Xamarin application, a Unity application, or a .NET Core application. So I'm gonna stop real quick and go to a demo and show you .NET Core tooling. Okay, here I am at Visual Studio 2017, and for the first time we have .NET Core support baked into Visual Studio. So you can see I've got my .NET Core node here. I can build console apps, class libraries, test projects, and ASP.NET Core projects. I've also got this new .NET Standard node for building libraries you can share across all of the .NETs out there. Today, let's quickly show off a .NET Core. So I'm gonna create a console application. And once this project's created, I'm gonna show a couple of the things we've done as we've moved from Project JSON to CS Proj. So my project's here restoring, and a new feature in Visual Studio is I can now um, right-click on my project, and I can edit the CS Proj file live in Visual Studio. Uh, something else, when you look at this, this CS Proj file, look at how simple this is. There's no GUIDs or list of files in here. Uh, we took all the cool innovations we built uh, in project.json and moved them directly into CS Proj. So let me do a demo of a few of these things. So I'm gonna go into my project, and I'm gonna manage NuGet packages, and let's add a popular package. So we'll add Newtonsoft here, and I'll click OK. We'll accept this. And now this package is added. Now what I can do is, what's new, is we now show packages directly in the Solution Explorer. So if I click open over here, you'll see that I've got this new dependency here called NuGet, and I can open it up, and you can see Newtonsoft right there. So that's pretty cool. I can also go back to my CS Proj file, and I can just come in here, I can erase this package reference, save the file, and as I do, notice my package reference over here is gonna go away in the Explorer. So now I can live edit right in Visual Studio my CS Proj files, um, just like you could Project JSON files. I wanna show one more feature, we'll just put that package back. Another feature is, you're gonna notice in my CS Proj file, there's not a list of files in my project. That's because we don't list these anymore because we actually do globbing, which allows us to pull up all the, file, all the CS files in a folder. So if I take my project and I say open uh, the folder in Explorer, and I've got another window over here, I can just drag a file in to my project. And as I do, you'll notice it shows right up in Solution Explorer. And that file is not listed in CS Proj. So we have globbing, which allows you just to drop files in your folder. They just show up in your project. And we have the package manager built right into CS Proj. And for the first time ever, you can also edit CS Proj's live in Visual Studio without opening and closing your project. And now we're back, and I want to talk about .NET Core 1.1, which is also available in Visual Studio 2017. Um, it's a new release that has a bunch of new stuff in it. Some of those things are WebSockets, URL rewriting, response caching, precompiling your views, Azure integration, so you can actually have your diagnostics show up in Azure. Um, for EF Core, we have some exciting stuff as well. We have connection retries for cloud databases. We have a new feature where you can put annotations on your, on your data model, and we'll actually tell SQL Server to go put those tables in memory. Um, and we have support for containers built in uh, as well. And so I'm gonna do a quick demo and show you what .NET Core container support looks like. So here I am in Visual Studio, and I clicked on the web node here, and I'm gonna select ASP.NET Core project and, and build an ASP.NET Core project. Something new that you're gonna see here is there's this new button here, enable Docker support. This enables you to build a .NET Core project that you actually can publish to a Docker container. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked for now. I'm gonna create my project. Um, the reason I didn't check that is I wanna show that you can actually decide that when you create your project that you wanna make it Dockerized, or after the, after the fact you've created it, you might decide I wanna make this a Docker project. So I'm gonna right click over here on my project. I'm gonna click add. Docker support is right here, so anytime after I create my project, I can also decide to add Docker support to it. And what this means is, when I run my application, it's actually going to run in a Docker container on my Windows machine. So I'm actually in VS on a Windows box, but when I run my project, it's gonna run in a Linux container. So let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna go and put a breakpoint in my home controller. We'll go to the index method here. I'll put a breakpoint over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, you're gonna notice here that my button here now says Docker because I've Dockerized my project. And so when I click this, it's going to create a Docker VM, copy my project in there, 
and hook the debugger to it. So we'll run this. The first time you do this, it's gonna take a, a couple of seconds to create all that stuff. Um, what's really awesome is once you built it the first time and that container exists, the workflow is really, really fast. So you can basically develop in a container at the same speed that you would actually uh, develop locally if you wanted to. So you can see the uh, project's running, the debugger's loading, and my breakpoint hit inside of my Docker container. Now even better, um, we've just announced recently the support for uh, being able to publish into App Service, Azure App Service, publish containers to App Service. I can right click on my project, go to publish, and you're gonna notice this new thing shows up here, Azure App Service Linux. So I now have the ability to take my .NET Core project, click on this, click publish. It's going to ask me to fill in a few things here, um, the name of my application, my resource group, my service plan, a new feature here. Uh, notice we have a container registry. So we have a, a new Azure service that lets you actually host your containers uh, called Azure Container Registry. Um, I'll just cl click the Create button here. And what will happen is we'll create all those instances in the cloud for you. Once they're created, we will then publish your code to them. Now that we're back, let's move on. I want to talk one more thing about innovation. One of the goals of .NET Core is to be able to go at a faster pace than Windows or Visual Studio can ship. And so the plan is that we have a what we call a current release, and that's a release of the, of the product that actually ships about every six months. So you get new features every six months uh, on this cadence. And then for customers that want to stay on a, an older version for a longer period of time, we're going to let customers stay on what we call our LTS, or long-term support version. And you can stay on that for up to about a two-year window. So we give you a fast track and a slow track based on uh, what you want for the apps you're building. Let's talk about .NET Standard. Um, we talked about .NET Framework. We talked about .NET Core. Uh, .NET Standard is how we look at unifying all our .NETs. We've, you've unified the tooling around CSProj. The next thing we want to do is unify around .NET Standard. And the way I like, like to think of this is .NET Standard is all the .NET uh, that exists no matter what type of .NET application you're building. So it's, you learn one library, .NET Standard, and your code can be shared across Xamarin, .NET Core, um, WinForms, WPF, .NET Framework, um, or even things like Unity. Um, and so it's basically, it's kind of a, a contract saying, here's all the APIs that every .NET must, must create. Um, Visual Studio 2017 ships with .NET Standard 1. Um, and today, when you try it, you're gonna find .NET Standard 1 doesn't have as many APIs as we would like. Uh, but pretty soon after we ship this, uh, we will have a preview of .NET Standard 2. And .NET Standard 2 is going to bring back a ton of APIs. So if you tried .NET Core in one of its preview states and there were some APIs that were missing, you're gonna be very happy. You're gonna see that all of XML, all of serialization, all of networking, all of I.O., all of threading and core uh, comes back. And our hope is it makes it much easier to share code across Xamarin to .NET Core to, to .NET Framework and our other, other frameworks as well. So I, I think that .NET Standard 2 is going to make um, all developers' lives happier. Another way to think of .NET Standard as well is um, I think of .NET Standard as being where innovation will happen in .NET moving forward. We don't add APIs to .NET Framework or .NET Core. We add them to .NET Standard and they apply to everybody. Okay, as you can see here, all my applications, a .NET Framework application, a Core application, a Xamarin application, can all share a library that's .NET Standard based. And that .NET Standard library can also talk to existing .NET Standard libraries, existing PCLs, and existing .NET Framework libraries. So it unifies the entire world. In the future, I hope we're gonna be in a place where you don't worry about, am I gonna add a new API to .NET Framework or .NET Core? You're gonna see those APIs show up in .NET Standard, and all .NETs will get them. And so I hope today um, I've shown a few things that are pretty exciting that are coming in VS 2017. Um, and please try the code, enjoy your coding, and give us feedback. And thanks for watching the video.